And when I ask this question, like this is just uh, from the heart, just a real genuine question. Don't be hard, just participate, okay? How many of y'all in here really believe in God? By a show of hands. By a show of hands. How many of y'all believe in God? And, and no, because he, no, I'm going to tell y'all, because the Bible said the devil believed too, right? right? But I'm asking the question, how many of y'all want to serve God by a show of hands? Who want to serve God? Okay. Praise God. Well, guess what? This message is for you. Okay. If you didn't raise your hand, then hey, just chill until next time. Woo. But this message is for those that say they believe and really want to serve God. So I just want you to listen with your heart, okay? Amen. Amen. So without, without further ado, we're going to get started. Y'all, this is Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Amen. Which brings us to the title, The Truthful Lie. The Truthful Lie. And I know y'all, I'm in all black like I'm Agent Zero. But this is a funeral because we're going to put the truthful lie to bed. Amen. We, we will. So let us pray so we can get started. Let's pray. The Heavenly Most Gracious Father, Father God, we just want to say thank you for giving us another opportunity to study a portion of your word, Father. I pray that you take your stand behind this desk, Father God, and the words that I speak on today do not come from me, Father, but they come strictly from you and your Holy Spirit. I pray that you continue to lead us and guide us into all truth, Father. Watch over us, protect us, and keep us safe. We ask all these things in your Holy Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, y'all, the truthful lie. truthful lie. So listen, my illustration uh, is a true one. Uh, for any of you that read and study the word of God. So y'all remember what happened with the children of Israel, right? How God freed them. Y'all remember God freed them from, from Egypt, baptized them through the Red Sea, etc., etc. But y'all remember when they got over to um, not yet to the promised land, but when they were in the wilderness and God started to feed the manna, right? Y'all remember as they was eating the manna and they started complaining. Even if you want further reference, you can go to Numbers 11 and catch up on this story. But you remember they started complaining. And their complaint was because they had to eat the manna and it was bland, boring, or it wasn't what they was accustomed to. They was like, uh, I remember when we was in Egypt, we ate the melons and the flesh pots, and they was like they ate them freely. And how many of y'all know that food was pleasant to them? It was good to them. And they were saying how they ate it freely. Amen? So the truth of the matter was they did eat it freely, and it was good to them. But they didn't understand how deadly the consequence was or how... They were in slavery or in bondage while partaking in this food that it would eventually kill them. So they did eat of it, and it was good to them, but where they ate it at and what it was going to eventually do was something they didn't take account of. And the complaining was just they lost sight of the end goal. And in the midst of them wanting to eat what they wanted to eat, they went back to Egypt. How many of y'all know they went back to Egypt in their mind first? They went back in their mind first. And they remembered the things that was pleasant to them, but not understanding the consequence. And I know y'all might understand or ask the question like, why did I name this the truthful lie? Because there is some truth to it, but the lie of it can deceive you. Because you don't pay attention to it, or you don't want to hear it. Amen? Amen? But God is going to help us with that today. And what I want y'all to understand today, too, is don't allow your truth. Listen to me. Don't allow your truth to keep you from 
the truth. That's life saving and not condemning. Amen? Don't let your truth keep you from the truth. That's life saving and not condemning. And I know the name of the sermon is The Truthful Lie. So you might have a question what's the truthful lie? It's different for a lot of us, but it all ends up the same way. So with the help of God, he's going to help us today. Amen? Amen. Which brings us to point number one. It's good to you. The truthful lie, first of all, point number one is, this truth is good to you. Okay? Amen. Let's go to the next slide. This is, y'all, Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 7. I guess I'll let you read through, Deacon, then we'll go back. and we'll, we'll break down. Go ahead. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of, of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God do know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they, and they sewed fig trees together and made themselves aprons. Okay, go back to verse 1. So, y'all, let's walk through this real quick. And this is my point number one. I told you it's good to you. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So we know that just means he was subtle. He was strictly. He could deceive you. Amen. This particular beast. But watch what it says. It says, he said to the woman, have God said you shall not eat every tree of the garden? So he asked her a question. He was enticing her. Hold on. Wait a minute. Did you know God said not to eat of every tree? So it sparked the conversation because God really did say that. Right? So look what she said. I mean, what he said. I'm sorry. When the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, which is in the middle, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it lest you die. I'm going to tell y'all what's good about that. Because as I was studying this this time, y'all, God was showing me different things in this that I really had never seen. God said not to eat of it. But not only did he say not to eat of it, he said not to touch it. Now, why is this good? Because he said don't eat of it, but don't touch it. So God knew something that she didn't know about herself. He said not to even touch it. So in other words, don't even come close to it. Why is this good, y'all? Because there will be some things that we shouldn't touch, but we still will get close. Right? And we'll get close, which entices us. But I'm going to tell y'all, and sometimes what God be trying to prevent us from, we can't see it until it's too late. It's already too late. But watch this. He said, she said, God should not, uh, she said, you should not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it lest she die. So she had the clear instructions, and she understood, man, that tree. And y'all, you ever heard a myth that you heard something about uh, something that's supposed to happen, and it goes, don't touch it or don't even go look for it. And you do it for, for so long, and then your mind intrigues you, and you want to go see why. This is one of those situations. I'm going to tell y'all why, because this Situation applies to each and every individual in here. And I'm going to tell y'all, when generational curses are real, y'all, and some things even your parents try to keep you from, be trying to prevent these things right here from happening. And I'm going to show you what I mean. It says, and the serpent said unto the woman, you should not surely die. So he kind of played with words with her, right? Like, no, nah, you ain't going to exactly die right then. Watch this. Go to the next slide. It says, for God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. So it's enticing her even more. Right? Like now, if you eat it, your eyes going to be open. And you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. How many of y'all know he was telling the truth? He was telling 
the truth. Satan was lying to her. He told her the truth. Now watch this. It says, this is the part that I don't want you to miss. He told her, no, you're going to be as God's. And y'all, that's a lowercase g. That's why I'm telling y'all he was telling her the truth. That's a lowercase g. And look what verse 6 says. It says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. See, this is what Satan told her right here. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now watch this. Notice. It didn't tempt her until she saw it was good for food. See, this is why, listen, y'all, don't miss this. She already knew she couldn't eat it. God told her also not to touch it. So guess what she did? She stayed away from it because God knew had she got close, she was going to see that this tree can be eaten too. The Bible say, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, so Satan already knew what was in there. He used what was in her to entice her to make her do something that was good to her. She, no, y'all finna tell y'all, let, let, let me break, let me make this of today. There'll be things in you or things that you do that's good to you that God told you to stay away from. No, listen to what I'm saying. A lot of, listen, when I told y'all about these generation of curses are real, a lot of people only picked up alcohol because they saw somebody else drinking it and what it did to them. You didn't even know you had an issue with alcohol until your mama told you, now stay away from my liquor, right? Yeah. Mama, why you want me to stay away from your liquor? Because that ain't good for you or, or what have you. And then you see her drinking and turning up. So as a child, guess what you say? Oh, I wonder what that alcohol really tastes like. Now I see it's good for me to drink. Listen, I see it's good for me to drink. And when I drink it, it tastes good to me. That's the truth. It's the truth that alcohol may taste good to you. But God may have been keeping you from that. Amen. Because it be stuff in you that it comes out once you enticed by it. That fruit, listen, God told her to stay away from it lest she die. Satan said, you ain't going to surely die. He just know you're going to be God. So when he told her it was going to be God, she got a little closer to it. I'm going to tell y'all something. A lot of times when you want to curse somebody out, yeah. right, or you want to fornicate, that's the feeling you get when you see that it's good to you and pleasurable to you, you want to do it. You listen. Now, this is what be pulling at us, y'all. It can be smoking weed. It can be smoking crack. It could be uh, the hooker. It can be whatever it is. It can be strip clubs. It can be pornography. It can be fighting. It can be cursing people out. All of this is something that's inside of you and God be trying to keep you away from. But you know what be pulling at you? You know what Satan tell you? You know what Satan said? You ain't going to surely die. He just know you're going to be wise. You know what that voice tell you? You ain't supposed to. You're going to be all right, though. That's what's going to get them straight. No, you curse them. That's really going to teach them a lesson. No, no, this is what the voice tell you. You ain't supposed to fornicate, but that sure going to feel good. Now, listen, if you're going to do it, it's really going to feel good to you. That's the truth. Now, I know you done had a long day. Man, go pick that alcohol up. Go drink it. It's really going to make you feel good. Get wasted. You're going to have the best time of your life. That's the feeling that's inside of you that it, and it talks to you. The exact same thing. You got attitude? No, go tell her. Listen, i tell you what. If you tell her. I guarantee you she get a mind, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Same situation. You know you're not supposed to do it, but it's gonna make you feel good. And guess what? It's your truth because you know that's what the outcome gonna be. Yeah, if I tell her, yeah, that everybody in this office gonna know not to play with me then. <laughs> that's the feeling. Right? Amen. Or if I go touch her, yeah, she gonna be calling me tomorrow. I get what I want then. No, I'm telling y'all because I'm telling the truth about me. That's how I used to feel. I was like, oh, yeah, if I touch her, oh, I got her. No, no, I was, that was my truth, though. 
and it felt good to me. So I'm like, no, if she give me a chance, oh, yeah, she in trouble. But it's going to feel good to me. And when I got that chance, guess what? She was in trouble. But that was my truth because it felt good to me. I'm going to move on to the next, but I just want you all to understand that everything that you desire that feels good to you is your truth. That's your truth. I'm tired of these folks being late. Whatever, however you feel, you know how you agitated? Don't come talk to me. Don't come touch me. That's your truth. It is. Whatever it is that's in you, y'all think about it. I don't care if it's something you want to watch. I don't care if it's anything that God told you to stay away from, but it's still your truth. Man, ain't nothing wrong with you going to the club, turning up. Man, go have a good time and draw the fruits of your labor, and I'm going. And they all see you. You done, you ever, y'all know the saying, boy, we had a time last night. Usually ain't nothing good associated with that. No, I'm telling y'all, because that time last night, you was doing something out of character. You was feeling the way that had you not sober. Amen. You might have said some things that you usually don't say, but in the end, it felt good to you. It felt good to you. It did. So watch this. Even in this one, when the Satan told her, he said, if you, uh, if you won't surely die, you're just going to be a god. And the Bible said, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. See, this is what we got to remember, y'all. Had she just stayed away from it, it wouldn't have pulled her like that. Listen, the Bible said once she saw that it was pleasant and that it was good for food. Imagine God telling you to stay away from because he's saying, I know once you see it, it's going to become a problem. And y'all be thinking parents be holding you back or elders be holding you back. All God is saying no because if you see it, y'all, fornication had I not saw it. Yeah. It wouldn't have been a big of a problem for me. Y'all understand what I'm saying? A lot of alcoholics, had they just not saw it, had it not just been introduced to them, they wouldn't have known how good it would have made them feel. But even in this situation, because how subtle he was, as he was talking to her, he was drawing her in. And I'll say, no, all I got to do is get you to see it. Notice, notice the Bible didn't say Satan didn't take the fruit and said, huh, he, he didn't do that. He just told her, oh, he told you not to eat that tree? Oh, that's because he know it's going to make you a God and it's going to make you wise. And that was the truth. You know how you keep your purity and they say, no, I'll do it. You need to test that out. That's the truth. Once you do it, you're going to know how I feel. You're probably going to know what you like. That's the truth. Because it feels good to you. But there's a flip side that we tend to forget. When we do these things, that's good to us. And when I'm say, speaking on good to us, y'all, I'm talking about how you think, how you live, how you want to approach things, right? How you handle people. Because how many of y'all know a lot of people with bad attitudes, they had them when they was young? Yeah. Right? You say, oh, that girl got an attitude problem. She's three years old. Guess what? When she's 30, she still probably got one, unless God intervened. And a lot of times, we make it okay with our tears. No, they just, or we say stuff like, Oh, she got it honest. Or he got it honest. That shouldn't be honest for you no more. Not when you say you're with God. Amen. Now watch this. Look. Go to the next slide, verse 7. It says, and the eyes of them were both open. See, this is what I'm telling you. He was telling her the truth. So they both open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sold fig leaves together and made themselves apron. I'm going to tell y'all. What I appreciate about that, what God was telling us, there'll be things that's good to you that when it's finished, you shameful. Because how many of y'all know after they ate the fruit, they realized they were naked, which brought shame. So even though it felt good, there's a lot of things that feel good to you. But when it's finished, it's going to shame you. It's going to shame you. It's going to shame you. Which brings us to point number two. Watch this. The consequences are untimely. When you make decisions or when you do things that's good to you, right, that's not good for you. 
Go to the next slide. And we're still in Genesis. This is, ver- I went down to verse 11. So what this is, this is the consequence of what happened. Because she never, notice this. This is the truth part about it. I just want y'all to see. What Satan told her was the truth. Why I called it the truth for lies? Because he didn't explain or she didn't realize the consequences or how severe they was. But God told her. God told her she was going to die had she did it. But he said, you're not going to surely die. He didn't say you're not going to die. He said you're not going to surely die. But what he did, he exposed all the good that he thought came with it. Now, what it is, is you're going to be a god. You're going to know right from wrong. This is what it's going to show you, but it was a flip side too. So here's it, here it is. He ate, she ate. Watch this. Go ahead. And he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? So notice God just reminded them. Did you do something against what I told you? Yeah. Mm. That's all. He said, did you do something against what I told you? Watch this. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Wait a minute. I'm going to tell y'all what's so good about that. Was Adam lying? No. That is the woman God gave him. And that is the woman that gave him the fruit to eat. Y'all, pay attention to this. Because what he said was true. He said, did you, did you do against what I commanded you? He said, yeah, but the woman you gave me, listen, she gave me of that tree, and I did eat. Adam was telling her 100% true. Mm. He was. Go to the next slide. Watch this. Look at 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. She went lying. No, the serpent did trick her. He told her the truth. He just left some of it out. But he told her the truth. And what she's saying is, the serpent beguiled me, which the serpent did. Mm. It was the truth, y'all. Right. You want lying? It was the truth. Keep reading. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon your belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of your life. Before you go to the next slide, this one I want y'all to see. Y'all, I remember a while ago, I didn't even realize this. Did y'all know the serpent is on his belly because of this situation? A lot of people didn't even know the snake used to be straight up. But when this happened. God say, on your belly you go for the rest of your days. So when you see that, every time you see that snake doing this, just remember, oh, Satan caused that. Because the serpent allows Satan to get in him. Listen, the serpent allows Satan, right, to use him. And not only, y'all, this is what we got to remember, too. That serpent didn't just curse himself, but every serpent behind him. Oh, that's powerful, y'all. That's powerful. This is why I'm telling you about the consequences. Keep, watch this. He says, above, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. And y'all notice what uh, the man of God said, right? What he said, yeah, you know that woman you gave me, God? She the one gave it to me. And he went to the woman. The woman said, yeah, that serpent tricked me. No, it was the truth. But I want to show y'all something. Go to the next slide. Watch this. Look and I will me. punish and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So God is saying, I'm going to put hatred between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Look at verse 16. Keep reading. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception, and sorrow uh, thou shalt bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband. And he shall rule over thee. Wait a minute, y'all. First of all, did y'all know the reason why women be in so much pain during birth is because of this? Yeah. Now I'm going to tell y'all why that's powerful. Because have you ever seen animals give birth? They ain't taking no epidural. You ever seen all these animals give birth? They, ain't, they don't hurt like all uh, these human women do. Every woman in pain, that's why they're screaming and they're trying to kill the pain and they shoot that shot in your back. This is why. You see these women, these dogs or these camels, whoever, when they have these babies, they are not in pain. Only that woman is multiplied outside. Now, I know that the 
the wound may, it may be some discomfort, but that pain, because watch this, the woman got to sit in the hospital, right? All of these animals got, uh, um, or she got to make sure ain't nothing wrong. Sometimes she got to be stitched up, and it hurts, because that natural birth is different, right? But what I'm saying is, all animals have natural births. Now, that may be some discomfort, but what we do know is you ain't got to put them in a hospital for them to have their babies. Unless it may be some medical condition or something. Right? But when you see this, look what it says. He says, in the woman, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. Greatly. What does that mean? Yes, the serpent did beguile her. But she still had to pay for what she did. The reason why I'm saying that is because you'll do stuff that's good to you and your husband may cause or may be the reason why. But you still got to pay for what you did. God's still going to hold you accountable for the decision you made. Now, because how many of y'all know sometimes our marriages ain't blissful, right? Some of these men are sorry. Some of these men don't do the things God has called them to do. But that ain't the reason for the woman to get out of pocket. You know why? Because God just told her. He didn't say, you know what? You're right. That serpent did trick you. I got something for that serpent. That's all right, my child. Go ahead. No. He said, oh, the serpent trick you? Okay, well, I'm going to get the serpent, but I'm going to get you too. That's why I tell you, listen, the consequences, because a lot of times, y'all, I've seen people uh, complain or have issues on why they don't do certain things, and it's always because of somebody else. I hear people say all the time, I'm through with God because the folks that's supposed to be Christians, they don't treat me right. <laughs> Listen, they got to answer to God, but you do too. No, you know, but you know what, what God be showing inside of you? You already got a, a, a spirit of, of agitation or not wanting to be around people. And then when they entice that up out of you, guess what? You blame the people and you go sit at home. And you say, nah, them folks ain't right at that church. I'm going home. When God commanded us to assemble together, but he's saying, I'm going to deal with you based on that, right? And the folks, whoever you saying that offended you, they got to get it too, but it does not excuse you. And watch this. Go to the next slide. Look at 17. It says, and unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. So in other words, he's saying, she gave it to you, and you listen. So Adam told God, man, that woman, because I'm going to tell y'all, sometimes men make decisions just to keep the wife quiet. I'm telling y'all the truth. Hmm. Sometimes you'll make decisions. Watch this. I ain't just even speaking of the wife. Sometimes you'll make decisions just to keep your kids quiet or to keep your mama quiet. You'll, just, you'll make a decision because you want peace. But you cause disruption between you and God. So watch this. He said, because you ate that, because when Adam said, that woman you gave me, because a lot of times you say, God, that woman you gave me, and half the time God didn't give you that woman, you made a decision without asking him. Come on, man. Oh, boy. Mm. Or that man, he didn't give you that man, you made a decision without asking him. Guess what? The red signs were there, the red flags, as they say. The flags were already there. But guess what? Because you touched that what was forbidden, yeah. it clouded your judgment. Yeah. Take your time. It felt good to you, though. That's the truth. But you didn't know the consequences that was behind it. And when you see this right here, he said, because you ate, he says, cursed is the ground for thy sake. And then this is what I love. It says, in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You know, I'm going to tell you why I appreciate mm. that. Because too many men complain about working hard. No, nah, but, but when you understand scripture, you understand word, not that the work ain't hard, but when you understand word, see, those consequences, Adam didn't know he was cursing the generation of men behind him, mm. right? And I'm going to tell y'all, stop blaming Eve, too, because a lot of people say, what if Eve, God let you know when the Bible said when she saw that it was good for food, right. that was before she bit it. So Come they on. let you know it was in her already. Mm. No, I'm gonna, listen, y'all might never saw it like that, but y'all, oh, I just hate she bit the apple. No, God said when she saw that it was pleasant for food and desired to be looked up on, then she ate. Then she ate. So eventually one of y'all was going to fall and trip up. <laughs> it was already in. 
get close enough and come out. Touch. Amen. Amen. So when shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the, of the field? Look at 19. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. Mm. This is why when the men come home, they go. Uh, Hey now. Amen. Yeah, yeah, you, you kick your boots off. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I know sometimes I walk in that door. Listen. Come on. Boots be mud out there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go put my stuff down. Hey, baby, you ready to eat? Yes, Lord. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but what I'm saying is, I'm going to tell y'all, men be feeling like they entitled because they tired. No, God told you it was going to be hard like this because of what happened in the beginning. And you don't know this is why these consequences are untimely. What I'm trying to tell you, men today, we make these same decisions and we cause things on our family just like this. Mm. Mm. We need it. Come on. When you listen. Yeah, you said, "Ooh, I know I'm supposed to touch her. Come on. Right. But it's going to feel good to me. Yeah. Now it's a seed in there. In the whole 18 years that you raised that son, you saying, I don't regret my child, but that mama, ooh. Mm. All because what felt good to you. <laughs> what was your truth? Yeah, it felt good. But the consequence, consequence. you just created a broken home. Now your son think it's okay to just get somebody pregnant but go marry somebody else. Mm. See how that works? Generation. Y'all see how that work? Listen. And he told Adam, he say, from the sweat of your brow, and all I'm saying is, man, stop feeling entitled because you come in the house and you sweaty and you got a little dirt on you and you need to take a shower. Go take that shower and keep kicking. Mm. Because, listen, all right. Adam didn't know. No, I'm going to tell y'all because we ain't entitled. We, I call this the microwave generation. We feel so entitled now. I'm, t I'm serious. Everybody want to be uh, social media influencers. Uh, Everybody want to own businesses, but want to shut the business off at 5 o'clock. Entrepreneurs don't work like that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? A 9 to 5 mindset in a uh, CEO mindset is totally different. Yes, sir. Right. But you want to own your own business, but you ain't taking calls after 4. It don't work like that. <laughs> We're in this microwave generation for real. And you think you entitled. I mean, these people ain't give. God told you. You was going to work hard. It was going to be things that not come easy. Amen. But that's how you was going to have to take care of your family, all because of that man bit that fruit when he told God, when God told him not to. And all I'm telling y'all is God told all of us not to. Yeah. And we do it not understanding the consequences behind it. The truth about it is it does feel good to us, but it's covered up. You ain't truly understanding the consequences behind it. You ain't no sleeping with that woman was going to cause you 18 years of pain. Why? Because you're talking about child support. Yeah, you make $8,000 a month, but they're giving her 3000 of it. And that truck that you say you want it, now you in the car. I can't even buy the truck because of that woman. No, that's because of you. You laid down with her. So what I'm saying is a lot of times what's in you, what feel good to you, got some consequences that the truth is being hid about. And God told us right here, he said, from the sweat of y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, anybody that know me, that really know me, know I was an office guy. No, I'm serious. Who? I was the office dude. Who going outside? No, I'll tell y'all what to do. I ain't going out there. <laughs> no, for real. I, listen, I praise God. I was like, when I was growing up, I said, like, God, you, this mind got to work. Mm -mm. I'm a manager. I don't do that. <laughs> But let me listen. So praise God throughout most of my adulthood, I managed a lot, right? But I remember reading this, God humbled me. Because he was saying, boy, you ain't entitled to nothing. If you got to get out there and get dirty, you better get out there and get dirty. It's a blessing to be able to sit in there and tell folks what to do, right? Because I know what my words say. So guess what? I got steel toe boots now. I do. Ain't never had a pair in my life. But I got them now. I've been having them for two years. No, listen, what I'm saying is, but now even when I get outside, I can appreciate because I say, God, this is what you said. You know, this is what you said. You said, if it's some mud right there, let's get it. Because guess what? My wife, she got to eat. 
You know what I'm saying? She, things got to happen. And he already told me, I don't care if I come home and tired. And she just waking up. My wife don't do that. Don't be looking. Oh, he got a lazy wife. No, she don't wake up when I come home. But what I'm saying is, it's my responsibility ultimately to provide for her. Right? And however I have to do that, then that's what I do. Not saying that she can't work, but, I'm, but ultimately it's on me. If we ain't eating, she don't, if she look at me and say, hey, how we going to eat? I can't look back at her and say, how are we going to eat then? No, I got to be like, let me figure something out. You know, because that's the way it go. And when God told a man that he was going to do that, it was all because of that decision he made. Right? And that consequence that he made, I mean, that consequence behind that decision got all us in trouble. So what I'm saying to you is, watch the decisions you make because it feel good to you because you never know what type of sorrow they bring on your kids, on your spouse, on your mom, on your family. Do you know how many families are in debt right now because somebody decided to do what made them feel good? Now you done messed up three and four generations behind you. Oh, because you did what made you feel good. Them consequences, let me tell y'all, brothers and sisters, even that sex demon, because that's what it is, that fornication demon, boy, to get you in some trouble. As soon as you, as soon as you start it, amen, that alcohol demon will get you in trouble. Yeah, it make you feel good. Yeah, you had a long day, but you go get drunk. Now, listen, you don't even consider that when you do your monthly expenses, you spent $300 that month on alcohol. You don't even see that. So the electric bill that you had to get an extension on that was about to get cut off, had you not picked up alcohol, it would have been paid. No, seriously. And guess what? That, um, that job you can't get because you got a DUI, that car that your wife needed, had you not got that DUI because you picked that alcohol up, you could afford it. You know, that, that, that feeling of I just got to get you back. Now you got an assault charge on your record, and that job that you got a degree in won't hire you because you got an assault on your record. And the difference in your salary is 40000 so that house that you wanted for your kids? No, listen to me, y'all. This is the truth. Now you got a child that's growing up in an apartment. You may want it a home for them on an acre of land, but because of the decision you made, you can't even give it to them. And no, ain't nothing wrong with apartment, and that ain't for everybody. But I'm saying, you be wondering why you're thinking God punishing you when he's saying, I ain't put a gun in your head and made you do that. But because it felt good to you, right? You want to cuss that supervisor out. So now your salary went from 100000 to 50000 because you can't find a job. You want to do that because it felt good to you. And the consequence, now you're at home, baby, I don't know why these folks won't hire me. You know. And God is trying to tell you. Yo, and so whatever, trying to create a family, the woman you choose, all of that stuff has consequences. And a lot of times, because it feel good to you, you don't realize how detrimental those consequences can be. Amen? Which brings us to point number three. Watch this. The truth about everything that feels good to you exposes your heart. Mm. It exposes your heart. And this is what I mean. Go to the next slide. This is uh, Hebrews 3, uh, 12, 13. I got an NLT. Be so, careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving. Come on. Turning you away from the living God. First of all, listen. What can turn you away from the living God? First of all, the living God has an instruction manual, which is called the Bible. The Bible instructs us on how we should be day to day. Tells us how we should act, how we should respond. Listen, how we should treat our spouse. I, mean, well, I don't care how great of a counselor any of y'all was. Could nobody taught me better how to treat my woman than God. Amen. Listen, but and, and I'm going to tell y'all what I mean by that. I'm not saying that there are not godly counselors because there are, but it's through God that he talked to, to you through them. Right, right. You understand what I'm saying? Like if you got a counselor and they say, let me show you what the words say. That's what I'm talking about. God taught me how to treat my woman. He taught me what a husband's supposed to be. That's how I knew I, I, I had to go to work. Amen. That's Amen. how I know I'm supposed to love her like Christ loved the church. That's how I know when the Bible say, husband loves your wives and be not bitter against them. She couldn't tell me not to be bitter against her, but God could. And when God showed me that, I understood I can't be bitter against that woman. That's the difference. So when you see this, God is telling us, make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving. How can it be unbelieving when God tells you to do one thing, but because it feels good to you, you do something else? Mm. He tells you to go apologize to that woman. Who? <laughs> yeah. I ain't did nothing wrong. 
Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, y'all done talked to so, so many men. You no, know, we start saying, man, I get up and go to work every day, man. I be tired. I come home. Work stressing me out. Go read Genesis. <laughs> no, seriously. Because God already told you. That's st- listen, that stress and all that stuff you're dealing with at work ain't got nothing to do with this woman. Nothing to do with it. When house. you come home. You can't be Amen. telling her because of the job did this. You got to do that. They ain't got nothing to do with that. Mm. And that woman, when she, when, when, when she hurt her, when she in pain, and when she had her kids, and the Bible told us, ain't covered the part when it said her desire should be to her husband. Hey. Uh-oh. Mm. Hey. I know y'all saying skip that part. Yeah. <laughs> her desire is to be to her husband. This is why you see. Listen, the husband had a predominant influence in the relationship, unless he should. That's, listen, that ain't my counsel. That's godly counsel. Amen. God said that. That's why, as a woman, you better make sure that Joker fear God. Boy, I said one more time. Come on now. You better make sure he fear God because when you say I do, that's a covenant before God. And you might be stuck if he ain't give you no way out. And if you stuck, you better make sure he fear, reverence, and respect God. Because I ain't say your desires was to him. God said that. He said that. Boy, listen. He said, make sure your hearts, when I tell you something, that you don't do the opposite. Because a lot of y'all, I told you, be blaming folks. God be saying, no, it's in your heart already. Because mm-hmm. look what he said. He said, turn mm-hmm. you away from the living God. Look at 13. You must warn each other every day while it's still today so that none of you will be deceived by sin. Deception is trickery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if y'all ever seen. I used to see, like, you know how they do magic? Y'all ever seen the, 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 uh, like the, the videos behind how they do these magic tricks? Mm-hmm. It's because they expose them. Now, I'll be like, I would have never thought of that. What I'm saying is the reason why it's called a trick is because you didn't know that you got tricked. Mm-hmm. It's deception because it fooled you. And what God is saying, sin can fool you. And how you, you listen, it's, you, you fool because you don't know. It's not a trick if you got it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Understand what God is saying. It's not a trick if you got it. It's a trick because you didn't get it. And what he's saying is if your heart is deceptive, and this is what we do, we tend to do a lot because it feels good to us. Whether it's cursing somebody out, not speaking, not wanting to go apologize, all about self, all of this stuff. That's the stuff that deceives you. You make it up in your heart to excuse your behavior. And it's totally against the word of God. And what he's saying is, it will deceive you. And not only will it deceive you, it will harden you against God. Mm. Oh, God, that's scary. Because I'm going to tell you what God is saying. You play with it, right? Mm. You're doing things that's against me. Eventually, you're going to be all for what you're doing. See, sometimes when it start off, you know you shouldn't be doing it. And you still got a conscience towards God. Like, I'm doing this. I shouldn't be doing it. I know God don't like this. God said, eventually the sin that's going to harden your heart, and what I said going to go out the window, and you're going to make it totally okay about what you're doing. Amen. Because it feels good to you. And that's the truth. But the consequences, that's the lie that you got caught up in. You thought it was going to be okay, and it wasn't. He says, while it's still today, and that's another thing. He say, warn each other. When we say, man, you come on, you know God don't like that. You know what God, how God admonishes us. We should be doing this, we should be doing that. I don't want to hear that okay. with your self-righteous self. Okay. When all I'm doing is telling you the word of God. All I'm telling you, listen, me and my wife have these conversations a lot. There'll be times we be hated and the word come across. How many of y'all know that word come across and it hurt? Yeah. Yeah. She'd be like, what you say, husband of mine? Yeah. Leader of mine? Uh-huh. Lord of mine? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Nah, but let me tell y'all what that does. So now I got to say, am I the husband? Uh-oh. Am I a true leader? Mm-hmm. Am I an example of the Lord? Mm-hmm. Nah, baby, I ain't mean it like that. Mm-hmm. Y'all see what just happened? Yeah, right. No, listen, but that's how it is. Right. And what God is saying, you can deceive yourself trying to do what you want to do. Yeah. And that's why it starts when you were small, because some of y'all women were raised to be independent. Because you had a, that, that's, that's why it's so important you choose the right one. Listen, y'all, because I know how things work and trauma work. That woman could have a, a, a man that's not of God. That daughter grow up and she see that man that's not of God. 
And that, that mama feeding her, baby, don't, don't do what I did. Don't, these men ain't no good, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That woman get up and she say, I don't need no man. I'm my own man. That's what they say. I want a child, but ain't no man going to tell me what to do. I saw what my mama went through. And your mama may not have listened to God. That's the truth about it, y'all. This is why it's so important. She went with what made her feel good. Y'all remember the song? Um, I ain't been out the world that long, but Mary J had a song called, uh, what was it? Uh, good, girl, good guys ain't no, wait a minute. Mr. Wrong. Mr. Wrong. Yeah, it was like, uh, what's the high go, y'all? Good. Bad guys ain't no good, but good guys ain't no fun. Ooh. Listen. So you know what she was saying, right? Yeah, I don't really want the good dude because he's boring. But it's the bad guy that I have fun with. But that's the bad guy that causes you 18 years of standing up and crying because he ain't got no daddy. But Mr. Feel Good or Mr. Wrong, and now you crying at the, while your child's 10 and you got to work two jobs and you saying, God, what did I do to deserve this? And you know what he's saying? You listen to yourself. You listen to what made you feel good. Now, 10 years later, you think, I'm going to make it go away because you made that decision? Consequences are untimely, y'all. They are. This is why it's important we make the right decision. This is why when God said, wait till marriage, don't try them. You know, but the men say, hey, go try out, boy. You might. But if I don't never know what's up, listen, if I ain't did all them examples, why, how would I know what to expect out of her? You understand? What if, imagine if we both was pure and we tried everything together for the first time. I don't know what I'm missing. You know what they say, you'll miss what you never had. That's true. Only when you had it can you miss it. But because you're listening to your mind and you want to feel good, guess what you go do? Get what makes you feel good and now you're chasing that same feeling and you got an unstable family, you got kids with different fathers. And I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just telling you to consider your decisions, consider what's wise or what's wisdom according to God. Because he's saying all those decisions you make that can harden you against him, that's in your heart. Watch this. Go to the next slide. This is uh, Mark 7, 20 through 23. And he said, Go ahead. And he said that, that which cometh out of the man, that defile the man. So he said that what coming out. This is why I'm telling you it exposes your heart. Go ahead. For from within, out of the heart of man, Proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Listen. Evil thoughts. Notice God ain't say evil thoughts came from him. It came from your heart. Mm. A lot of times we be wanting to get folks back, right? We want to do things because we feel like people deserve it. He say these are the things that come mm. from your heart. And what you're trying to do coming from your heart exposes what you listen to or not. Because you know God speaks against that. Because it, it's, it's going to come out of here. He said evil thoughts. Look. Adulteries. adulteries. What else? Fornications. What else? Murders. Look, adulteries, fornications. How many of y'all know? Adultery and fornication is probably one of the biggest sins that we struggle with as a human race today. Amen. You know how I know? Porn is one of the most profitable industries in the world. Yeah. Unadulterated. Listen, one of the most profitable, I think it's a multi billion dollar industry. This is why you got so many people. Indulging in OnlyFans and all of this stuff right here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But this is the very thing God speaks against. Adulterers and fornication. Look, murderers, people getting killed. And you know, the Bible says you can kill your brother or sister just by not liking them. Why? You hate them. Mm. No, that's been, no, that's been, God say because you got an out or uh, issue with your brother or sister and you don't want to be around them and, or they, you feel some type of way about them, that, you're murdering them. Right? He's, that's in your heart. Go to the next slide. Look. Thefts. Thefts, some of y'all like to, they come from the heart. Some of y'all <laughs> like to taste stuff, right? Oh, I'm going to tell y'all how Satan is so clever because I've seen people that used to steal because they wanted their kids to have a good Christmas. Right, right. Amen. And they got away with it, God. You know, man, I had to do what I had to do. Then, you know, this is how, see, this is what I'm telling you how tricky your mind, your, your mind is tricky. I've seen people say, man, it's a multi-billion dollar uh, company. They ain't going to miss it. It's just a few, just a few items. I got five hundred dollars worth of items. Shoot, they worth millions of dollars. They ain't gonna miss this because of that theft is in your heart. This is how people do. Look, covetous. You, 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 you got so many people that want you to do good, but not better than them. Mm. It's in their heart. They say, hey, "Amen, girl. That's a nice looking monster. Look at the wheels. You got a sunroof and everything." 
I'm congratulating you because I got an AMG over there. Mm. And oh, that miles the nice. It ain't that AMG though. So I'm good with congratulating you. But now you go get a G Wagon or something. <laughs> Guess what? They walked outside and didn't even see it. <laughs> oh, girl, you know I went in. Oh, for real? Girl, I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> That's nice. Because they see your heart. I'm, tell, I'm being honest with y'all. They see how your husband treats you. Oh, it's it just something about it. I, I don't know. <laughs> Look at them opening the door for you. Don't even take all that. <laughs> That's because you want your husband to open the door for you. Come on now. <laughs> but instead of having that conversation with your mm. husband and getting yourself right at home, you covered and are jealous of somebody over there. Mm. And then you make excuses for it because I'm gonna tell you, you can listen. You can tell when hatred in somebody's heart. All you gotta do is attempt to do one thing wrong, and they hate you forever. That's in the heart, though. That's in the heart, and God is telling you, my word exposed, because how you going to forgive 70 times 7 when you hate me? You barely even want to talk to me. So what you waiting on is me to do something so you don't have to talk to me. Mm. You know, you really have to love a person to forgive them. You really have to love a person to forgive them. That fake love? This real talk, no church talk, y'all. That Amen. fake love? It's for the birds. Amen. Yeah, all I got to do is do something wrong to you. You expose what's in your heart. That's it. You, yeah, hey, sis, I love you too. Y'all be careful. Until you heard I said something about you. You ain't even trying to find out if it's true or not because that hate is in your heart. And God is showing us, listen, wickedness, deceit, that trickery. Y'all know in the Bible it talks about how people say in their heart, hey, yeah, you can have some of my food, eat what you want, but you really don't mean it. Proverbs talk about that. Come on now. Girl, come on, make yourself at home. Don't mess my bed up now. <laughs> oh, you hungry? Okay. You know what? Let me go. Let me, let me tell my husband to bring some. Baby, can you bring some? I'm so tired of these people. I'm going to go and cook for them, though, because that's what we're supposed to do. I'm just keeping it real, y'all. That's how it is. That's how it is. And you got that in your heart, right? And God is saying, no, I see it. He said that deceit, you tricking them folks, thinking, making them think they really, you really love them. You don't love them. Oh, Come on, <laughs> Listen, some folks love you until they got to do something for you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, as long as you're doing something for them, yeah. you're the best friend. Hey, yeah. <laughs> but when it's time for you to do for them, I'm so sick of such and such. No, I don't know what. I'm a, I'm a, look. <laughs> The lasciviousness and evil eye. Oh, Lord, help us. Even, and I get it. Some people have things that they need to work on, right? I know. I understand that. But that ain't your position to hate them or have an evil eye towards them. You got to be able to be that brother and sister that help and encourage them, y'all. This is what God admonishes us to do. Blaspheming. And listen, pride. Ooh, pride. Pride, let me tell you, pride will disrupt you from the inside out. Listen, because I'm going to tell y'all, pride make you feel entitled. You going to do this to me? Of all people, me? <laughs> Who are you? No, seriously, and I know the cliche, they did it to Jesus, but it's true. The one, <laughs> the one, listen. The one you did it to. The one you did it to. Now somebody doing it to you and you got the audacity to think you are owed something. Me? You gonna do this? You gonna get this after nerves? After I, now I'm gonna tell you, but this is you gotta watch yourself. This is when people start saying, yeah, after I done paid her bills and her kids ain't have no food. Listen. That ain't none of my business, sir. Or ma'am, you shouldn't even utter those words because obviously you ain't did it from the heart and God is exposing you. Listen, God is exposing you through issues. That's all he's saying. Ain't no way. I don't care if you was about to get kicked out and I paid your rent for three months. It ain't none of the church business. 
even if we fall out, guess what? That's okay. I ain't going around talking about, oh, you know, for three months, for what? Because guess who keep my lights on? God. And I could never repay him, ever. So when you talk about that evil eye, that blasphemy, or that pride, you doing things to get something back. When God tells you what to do, it exposes what's in your heart. See, you'll do, see, it make you feel good to utter those things that you did for people. It make you feel good. You're trying to uh, raise your level up so people can look at you like, oh, you did all of that? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, you paid that? Oh, you were taking the kids to school for real? And they had the nurse to do that to you? You the one in error. You are. That's where that pride And he say foolishness. I'm going to tell y'all what's crazy about that word foolishness. Do y'all know God said in Corinthians that he was going to save us by the foolishness of preaching? No, I'm going to tell y'all it hit different. The very word that we consider wisdom, God called foolishness. That save us. So, of course, when he's talking about this foolishness, imagine if what we consider wisdom foolishness what our real foolishness look like to him. Imagine that. So all that foolishness, that bickering, because I'm going to tell y'all what I used to think. When I was coming up, I used to think when you was 18, 19, 20, 21, 25, 30, you was an adult. Until I got 18, 19, 25, 30, you got 60-year-old kids, 45-year-old kids, 40-year-old kids, ain't even mature, don't even... Can't even have an adult conversation. Can't have a, 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 a conversation of comprehension. You ain't even talking to understand. The whole time you're on your way talking to me, you're already offended. Because you wait on me to say something that you don't agree with so you can tell me what's on your mind. That, that, that ain't mature. That's childish. That's foolishness, as God say. And look what he said. He said, and all these evil things which come from what? Within? Within. He telling you all of that stuff that come out. When you be talking and you cursing or you got that attitude, he say, that's what defile you. Mm. That's what gets you jacked up. It ain't, it ain't the stuff that you, it's you. It's coming out of you. Yeah, you know what made you feel good? It made you feel good because you paid their rent and you fed them that you had the right to tell them off. That's what made you feel good. But God said, no, nah, what that did was defile you. That's what it did. When you had a conversation with somebody about somebody else, that defiled you. God tells us how we should have bowels of mercy for people. Yeah. He tells us that, right? He said, because oh, all of this stuff here, this is what defiles a man. So that unadulterated truth or that truthful lie that's in you, the stuff that make you feel good, yeah, the truth, the part about it is, it does make you feel good. Mm -hmm. It do. But you know how you deceived or what the lies? You don't know, understand the consequences that comes with it. We are here as a product of what Adam and Eve did, right? Some of y'all in the situations y'all are in because of the decisions your parents made. So who going to change it around? Who going to really do what God said do? Who going to put that truthful lie to bed? Hey. Who going to stop holding on to how they feel? Who going to stop thinking that because they did a thing that, or that pride and make them feel entitled? Who going to put it to bed? That's what God is saying right here. He's saying all that, that blasphemy, that pride, that foolishness, that evil eye, that wickedness, that trickery, deceit, that getting even and stuff. This is what God said. He said, I'll do the repaying. Don't do evil for evil. He said you overcome evil with good. Right? But guess what? We have a heart to do evil for evil. And what God is saying, it just exposes what is, what's in you. Yeah. And you know, we say, this is what we start to say, man, nah, because it's just time out for that foolishness. Mm. No, what you're about to do is foolishness. Yeah. All right. When you say that, oh, it's just time out for that foolishness, and then you go address it however you want to address it, that's foolishness. And that's what God is saying, y'all. So as people of God, guess what? We got to stop listening to what, how, what makes us feel and how we feel good, right? And what we think, because we like to uh, cast our own judgment. No, nah, because I've been waiting for this for too long. I've been, I've been patient long enough. That's what we say. I've been patient long enough. It's time. According to who? Is it your word or is it God's word? And that's why I asked the question in the beginning. Who really believe God and who really want to serve God? Because if you want to serve God, all of this stuff right here, you start to self-check. Man, how am I? 
do, do I have covenants in me? What type of wickedness or pride or foolishness? And I'm going to tell you, I told y'all, and I say this when I get up here, I, I know for me, it's hard for me to ask people for stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm just exposing my, my own personal self. Uh, also, especially if I have an inkling that you don't want to do it. No, for real. This, this, that, that's me. And I'll be asking God, kids of God, because I know that's not of you, or you might be trying to show me something different. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, oh, you don't want me at your house? I'll sleep on the bridge before I sleep at your house, and you don't want me there. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, this is my mindset. And I'll be saying, God, if that's wrong, don't, don't let me feel like that. But I pray that He always, but what it does for me, though, because I know how I feel like that, oh, man, I'm trying to look out for the next person. And I don't never want them to feel like that. You know, if you in my house, man, be at home. Because I know how I would have felt had I been there and you act like you didn't want me there. So I'm never trying to show you that. I'm never trying to act like you shouldn't be at my house. Because I know how that reverse feeling is. And I ask God, if I ever had to be in that position, God, humble me. Don't allow me to be prideful. And a lot of things we don't do, y'all, is because we prideful, right? Or we don't want to look like the person that's, that, that has been humbled or have the mixed spirit because you want to be the one that's doing the checking versus getting checked. Amen. Y'all heard what I said? Because some, listen, because sometimes when you're living for God, you're going to get checked. <laughs> you is. You're going to get checked. But I'm going to tell you, you know, you know why you are able to get checked? Because you did. Think about what I just said. That's right. You are able to get checked because you did. In other words, that flesh that's burning, it's suppressed. You're saying, I know what I used to do, but because I'm dead now, I let you make it. That's why you was able to check me. You can look at it as a check all day long, but I know the Father in heaven which I serve, and I ain't going to allow that truthful lie or that deception to get me outside the will. Brothers and sisters, look, all I'm saying is, even from the beginning, when she saw that it was good for food to her, that's when she went and tried it. So much stuff that you do because you see that it's good to you, you go and do it and you just ignore the consequences as a whole. And when they come upon you, you think God owe you something because you got to deal with it. And all God is saying, you made that decision. That was your truth. And your truth kept you from the truth. Amen. Amen. So, y'all, let's not let our truth keep us from the truth. And I know it hurts, right? No, let's be real. Do it not hurt? Does it not hurt to follow the truth of God? Man, it hurts. It hurts. Sometimes you're at home and you're crying because you're saying, God, I don't know how much longer. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So you, but, I, but I want you to see is you ain't in it by yourself. Anybody that's serving God for real, have those days. Yeah. This is why God is able to tell us, don't get weary in your well-doing. Yeah. This is why. And as long as you keep feeling like that and you keep bearing that old man, yes. right? Yes. That truthful lie yes. will no longer affect you. Hallelujah. You can let the will of God take over your life. And you do those things that he called you to do. Amen. So all that stuff that make you feel good, all that stuff that you feel like you entitled to because you got this or you got that or you doing this or doing that. Man, let that go. Let it go. Let it go. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father God, we just want to say thank you once again for giving us another opportunity to study a portion of your word, Father. I pray that you continue to strengthen us, Father. Allow us to do those things that you have caused us to do, Father. We thank you for strength, Father God. We thank you for prayer. And we thank you for those that, that love us for real and that give us an example of those things that you came to do when you came down to die for us, Father God. And we pray that you continue to lead us and guide us into our truth, Father. And if we outside the wheel, show us, God, and give us spirits of humility that we're able to accept anything that you bring before us because we know without you, we are nothing. And once again, Father God, we just want to say thank you for everything that you've done. We ask this in your Holy Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all, the doors of the church are open.